what you're looking at is a military drill in the Mediterranean Sea carried out by Egypt. It came days after this handshake, which seemed to put the region on edge. It's another episode of tensions that have been boiling in the Mediterranean for some time. But what's behind the tensions? The answer to that question lies in what has driven much of Middle Eastern conflicts in the past. That's right, you guessed it, oil and gas. At the turn of the century, the first gas fields of the Mediterranean were discovered in the most unlikely of places, the Gaza Strip. Coupled with more discoveries off the shores of Israel, Cyprus and Egypt, this presented the region with a new opportunity. In 2010, the United States Geological Survey estimated that the Levant Basin contains 1.7 billion barrels of oil and 122 trillion cubic feet of gas. That's an enormous amount of hydrocarbons. The natural gas alone is worth around $700 billion, which has the potential to transform the region's economy. But there's an entangled web of legal, technical and political challenges that could stand in the way. One of the main challenges is the dispute over the delineation of maritime boundaries. According to international law, countries are entitled to whatever natural resources they can find within 200 miles offshore. This is known as exclusive economic zones. And this is where the issue begins. Due to the shape and size of the Mediterranean, the 200 miles rule is hard to apply, not least when countries are unilaterally declaring their own mapping of the Mediterranean. For example, this is the zone claimed by the Republic of Cyprus as its own economic zone. The Republic of Cyprus is an internationally recognized government, but Turkey doesn't recognize it as a sovereign state. And as a response to its declaration of the economic zone, Turkey signed a deal with the self-declared Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. The Turkish Cypriot administration is recognized as a state only by Turkey. The deal they signed outlines their own version of the map, which they argue should look like this. The issue is easy to spot here. These areas overlap with each other, with each side claiming the exclusive right to explore the untapped natural resources beneath the surface. The same problem exists here between Israel and Lebanon. Again. They both claim this area as their own. Most countries sharing the Mediterranean haven't declared their economic zones, but some of them have signed deals agreeing on shared zones as well as drilling and export plans. For example, Israel, Cyprus and Greece seem to have a shared vision and agreement on how they view the Mediterranean map. And after the 2013 military coup in Egypt, Cairo has been aligning itself more with its axis. Egypt is an important player in this puzzle because it's the only country in the region that has export infrastructure ready for use. Early in 2019, these four countries, along with Italy, Jordan and the Palestinian territories, launched what they called the Eastern Mediterranean Gas Forum. The Cairo-based initiative aims to quote-unquote create a regional gas market that serves the interests of its members. It excludes Libya, Lebanon, Syria, and Turkey, which was not well received. Ankara, for example, viewed the forum as an attempt to isolate it. This is how Greece envisions the Mediterranean map to look like, which effectively limits Turkey to these areas. A few months after the forum, Turkey signed its own deal with the internationally recognized government in Libya, claiming this area for the two countries. Again, the overlaps resurface. The different envisioned lines aren't random. They're based on different interpretations of the international law of the sea, which could make future resolutions complicated. Even more so when countries like Turkey, Israel and Syria aren't signatories to the UN's law of the sea. And if agreements aren't found, conflict might soon follow, as we've already seen threats of military action going left and right. But there are two immediate impacts that these disagreements will have. The first is that it could disrupt pipeline plans. The second is that it could push away international exploration companies. The gas estimated to be underwater is enough to supply internal demand and some more. So to maximize benefits, countries will have to export much of what they discover abroad, generating new streams of revenue for their economies. For that, you need pipelines. And for pipelines, you need coordination. Early in 2019, Israel, Cyprus and Greece announced plans for an ambitious pipeline project, 
which could carry gas from Israel to Cyprus and from there to Greece and Europe. But the planned pipeline will have to go through this zone, which Turkey and Libya have declared as their own. So the future of that pipeline is uncertain. And the likelihood of countries in dispute coming to the table is slim, considering the sour relations between many of them. Even if they do come to an agreement, the high-risk nature of projects like the pipeline and exploration missions can push international companies away. Turkey has already placed a ban on companies that deal with Cyprus and its exploration enterprises. This is not to mention the technical difficulties facing these mega projects. Each side now grows less and less willing to cooperate. And without an agreement that pleases everyone, the natural resource that once promised prosperity for the region could drag it further into hostile territory.